She's an active teenager, so it came as a shock when she first had symptoms. She called me after school one day to say that her heart was racing. Thinking that she had a panic attack, I asked her to relax and breathe slowly. But then she started to cry, so I rushed home from work. The attack lasted only about an hour, so by the time I got home, the symptoms had stopped. She was fine for about two to three months, and then it started again, and the third time. By then, I was worried and took her to the polyclinic to see a doctor. From there, we got a raffle to see Dr. Xiao. Right, when I first saw Delsey, I did a simple test called an ECG or electrocardiogram, which records the electrical signals across the chest coming from the heart. And this confirmed that she had a condition that we call wolf parkinson white syndrome, or WPW. Now, in a normal heart, there's an electrical system that regulates the heart rhythm. And in most people, there is only one route down from the top chambers to the bottom chambers electrically. In her case, she had an extra connection that connects the top chambers and the bottom chambers electrically. So the presence of this extra pathway allows an electrical short circuit to occur. So this can present as a very fast heart rate that the patient may describe as a feeling of palpitations, shortness of breath, or occasionally fainting spells. Dr. Seo explained the condition and the treatment options to us, namely long-term medication or procedure known as EPS. Long-term medication would treat the symptoms but not cure them, and there were potential side effects. EPS, on the other hand, has low complication rate and could potentially cure the arrhythmia. Dr. Xiao recommended EPS as Delcy was having frequent attacks. So together with Delcy, we decided that EPS was a better choice. During the EPS, once you've localized the exact position of the extra pathway or the abnormal area, we will hit there with the catheter and we apply energy in the form of heat. And this heats up the abnormal part and eliminates it, essentially burning it away. And this process creates an intentional scar there so that conduction can no longer occur over the extra pathway. So this prevents short circuits from reoccurring and effectively uh, results in a cure of the condition. We admitted Delcy the day before her procedure and explained what to expect. A lot of the preparation is standard. For example, obtaining an ECG, baseline blood test, signing of consent form, fasting from midnight or at least four to six hours before procedure, shaving of the groin region and setting up of intravenous excess sites on the back of the hand so that we can give the patient IV medications like analgesia and sedative during the procedure. Given Delcy's young age, she had her procedure done under general anesthesia. In most adult cases, the procedure can be carried out with minimal or no sedation. Once in the procedure room, monitoring devices were applied, groin regions were cleansed to ensure sterile readiness of the excess sites, and patients' response to the procedure itself and to the medica medications administered were being monitored continuously throughout the procedure. I was frightened when I found out I needed the procedure. When I got to the hospital, I was scared, but my mum looked after me. She said the procedure would stop the attacks I've been having. I didn't understand some bits, but it was comforting to know that she knew what was going on. I didn't like having the needle in my hand. It was uncomfortable, and it was hard to get any sleep. But the nurses were really kind, and everyone tried to help me stay calm. As a mother, I had a lot of sleepless nights leading up to the procedure. Although it took only about an hour and a half, um, it seemed like we waited a long time for Delcy to come out with our braiding theatre. But once in a while, the nurses were a great help. The aftercare for EPS is fairly simple. The post-procedure care may include rest in bed for at least four to six hours, paying special attention not to bend the affected groin, monitoring of vital signs, vascular access sites, and the affected leg at specific intervals administering painkiller when needed, obtaining an ECG, and education on care post-EPS. I'm very happy to say that the procedure went very well for Delcy. Through the EPS, we were able to localize and get rid of the extra pathway that was the cause of the short circuit and the fast heart rhythm. 
So she's essentially cured of her underlying disorder and she can lead a healthy, normal life. And uh, it's as if she was never born with, the, with this problem. I'm happy I had it done. I feel like I can enjoy life properly again. If you need EPS, I would say don't be afraid of the procedure. It's not a big operation. So stay calm and try not to feel like you're missing out on stuff while you recover afterwards. I'm glad I was really able to help Elsie through this. Um, it helped that I read up quite a bit so that she had not much to worry about. Elsie and I are really grateful to the staff of NUHCS who helped us each step of the way.